out, Fluffy Unicorn. He's so fluffy, I'm gonna die. Hello everyone, Arid here. So today we will be working on part 3 of our Hero Lighting series. And in this episode I will be working on um, Substance Painter on ZBrush. And we will be focusing most of our time in Maya where we will be working on that X-Gen Groom to make a really nice and fluffy sweater so Frozone will not freeze when he's casting his little ice spells. So be sure to check that out. Also, don't forget, we are on Discord. Be sure to join us on that server. The link is in the description below. So lots of talented artists, lots of projects, lots of challenges. So be sure to check it out over on Discord. All right, here we are in ZBrush and you can see the Z tool is loaded and you can see Frozone posing really nicely. So this model or this sculpt was done by my Discord member, Sashin, who helped me with this uh, project. All I had to do was refine a few things, like smoothen out a few areas, add maybe a bit more wrinkles. But essentially, um, I, I got this asset and then I was just probably just adding like a few little, um, like just add a bit more definition to his face, for instance. And then all I had to do in the end was just um, output a displacement map. And I'll be showing you how I did that. So obviously I just added a few more things like this and that. And all I had to do then go into uh, my outputs here into Z script, uh, sorry, Z plugin, and then multi-map exporter, tick displacement map, make sure you pick the right one, uh, the, right, the right subdivision level you want to export from, so probably around two or three, depending on how dense your mesh is. Make sure you export EXR files 32 bit, and that's essentially all I did. And I can't talk too much about the creation of the model, maybe Sashin um, can help out a bit about how he, how he generated this, but I think it's like a very basic, um, um, probably with these spheres or something like that, just to get the rough pose and then you just um, start to build up the shapes. Then you added the beard, like hands are separated and all of these things got exported into um, an OBJ format which I then imported in Maya and applied a few things. So it's very straightforward, I can't talk much about the sculpting much. Um, but yeah, so I think this was giving you just a little bit of an insight of how the Z tool looks like and all the compo components we have for this. All right, next up I loaded the head which we exported into Substance Painter and I just showing you the quick process about the texturing side. This was also done by Sashin. So essentially what he did, he started with a base color and then he just added uh, a bit more detail. So he started with skin detail and then he added um, skin pores and it's more apparent on a different channel. So you can see now um, he added those skin pores and he added those patches essentially. And it's just um, some kind of... Um, um, fill maps like brown no nose, um, white noises, and all these things are just added on top of each other. He applied occlusion maps. Um, this was just for different uh, channels. And then all in all, it just comes together with a nice uh, looking shader. And again, it's just essentially like Photoshop layers. You just add a few more things, um, do a few uh, fills and levels, and then essentially you get something um, quite good looking. It's not very sophisticated. There's not much... Um, really painting work going on but it definitely does work and it does work for the stylized character we have right here all right and for the sweater it's essentially a very simple thing as well you just need to make sure you have your uvs la laid out pretty good and once you do that we can actually show you the uvs here um, if i just switch it over to the 2d only you can see this is the uv layout so it's definitely nice laid out and this enables you to create a good looking um, effect here so um, what he did, he applied the stripes and he applied them to the height map. So uh, the stripes are essentially just a procedural which you can load in as a height map. And then you get this nice effect already. And then you just put it into bump map or height maps. And then you can play with roughness a bit. Um, obviously this is now too shiny, but then you just reduce the um, shininess. And you can do that later in look dev as well. And this is essentially, you can see there are some red dots in here just to break it up a little bit. But all in all, this is also very basic work, but it, in the end, like it, it, it really comes down to lighting it and look diving it to make it really pop and look nice. Obviously, we'll be going into X-Gen now and we'll be working on this better to add that nice fluffy um, cloth or fibers on it. So let's check that out now. All right, because I did not model and texture Frozone here, um, I just gave you a brief overview of what was done in ZBrush and in Substance Painter. So I hope that quick overview just showed you more or less what the project is about. And what I did, I baked out the displacement map and I baked out the um, textures from Substance. So I just then imported them into Maya. 
But now we will be jumping into Maya and working on that X-Gen fluffy sweater look. So check that out. All right, so now comes the exciting part. We will be doing the nice fur effect on the cloth sweater. So I'm just selecting the sweater. I'm going to my um, spacebar menu here and go to generate and in X-Gen, I'll be creating a new description. And I want to add it to my exit, like to a new collection. I already have a hero groom, but you could just create a new uh, collection here. Um, and then you just give it a name. Let's just call this um, for the sake sweater tutorial or sweater um, session, whatever you want to do here. And then for the sweater itself, I want to make sure that I use groomable splines, which, en which enables me to actually place and groom them and calm them and give direction to all these things. So that's important, create that, and then you should get all um, a new dialogue here and a new um, object in the descriptions here. So, and you can already see we have those yellow little guide curves, which we will be using for grooming or combing the overall look of the sweater. And like, I was not really looking for references. I was just thinking that this is a very fluffy sweater and it's very cloth-like, so, all the fibers on it are very distorted. So what I did at first, I was uh, picking up the pose brush and with shift you can change, as uh, shift and click and drag, you can change the size of the brush. And essentially all I was doing, I was just doing like kind of circles just to f give it a feel as if it like, like the hand went through it or like all these um, little fiber strands are just very uh, disorganized and chaotic. And it, Obviously, you can groom them in a sp um, specific rotation if you want it to be more um, calm looking. But for what I wanted to achieve for this effect was to have it very um, fluffy, right? So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just doing like adding chaos to everything. And I'm just very gently dragging and rotating. I have a Wacom tablet, um, but you can totally do that with a mouse as well. It doesn't matter much. Um, it's just... Uh, yeah, just going over this and you can see it's kind of fun to do it. Just breaking up the surface here. And obviously you don't need to go like everywhere. It depends what you want to render, right? If you want to do a 360 turntable, yes, you need to do every angle of your character. But for my sake, I'm probably just focusing on the front right now. Not so much on the back side. And then you can already see we have this nice uh, chaotic breakup and all these fibers are essentially going in all directions. And what you want to do next is probably um, apply a, or just use the bend modifier to just bend the tips a bit. So just to give them a little bit of uh, another bend, which is just another dimension. Um, it essentially will just calm the tips down or like point them upwards. Um, but that's again, creative choice, what you want to do. One important thing is because we did the calming, what you can try is use elevation brush to just lift a few of those um, guide curves up again because sometimes they are just a bit too flat on the surface and you just want to select that brush and go over all your fibers here just to lift them up slightly. Alright, so now let's see what we actually get. So this is my guide curves. What I want to do now is I actually want to present them. What I want to do on default is make sure that update preview automatically is off just because it will be very slow if you paint and you and Xgen wants to update the, the grooms. So just click that button here and that will update it. And you can see now after the update, we already get some fibers here. They are a bit short, but you can see they are actually nice and calm. They are following the guides, essentially what we painted or uh, calmed them with. So that is great. All right, so now let's add some more length to them. Right now, the length is driven by this map. We don't have a map though. What, what we can do, we can just type in a number here. Let's say put in two, and then you can see they should get longer. And this is exactly what we want to do, um, but we want to be a bit more controlled about it. So what I want to do is use a random function. You just type rand, and then you say your minimum value. Let's say we want a minimum length of point. Um, 05 and then a maximum probably about two units hit enter and then click that eye again to just update your view and now each um, uh, fur fiber will have uh, have a length between 0 0.5 and 2 so that's very helpful um, to create some more randomization to it and the next thing I want to do is uh, do a similar thing with the width like essentially for fabricated cloth, they are all the same width, but you can still mess around with that. So instead of just using a fixed value, let's try something with a 0.01 to 
five maybe. Uh, make sure you have your syntax correct. So function name and then brackets, open, close, and then min max. Yeah, just an update. So um, now you can see we have these a bit thinner and a bit thicker ones, which is great. What you want to do next is add some tapering to it. So um, the, the, the fiber, the hair itself, they taper towards the, the tips. And you can use this um, with the taper down below here, or you can just use a width ramp. So what, that's what I like to do most of the time is just provide a curve here. And this is essentially the profile of one single um, hair strand. And if I generate the fur, you can see now that the tips are getting very thin towards the top. And this is exactly what I want. Um, you can see now that it works very nicely and the hair is only generated in the camera of Rustam, right? So it, it's not generated outside just for efficiency's sake. Next up, I want to head over to modifiers and I want to create a noise modifier, which adds some kind of um, scraggliness, fuzziness to it. So let's just generate that and see what we get. You can, re you can already see there was some minor um, changes going on. So what you can do is maybe bring up the amplitude or magnitude to five and update again. So now you should see a bit more chaos. One thing to remember is on default, Excel is very optimized. So just make sure you increase your modifier CV count, which is essentially points on the curve, which allow you to create a more detailed uh, modifier. So probably because we want it to be very detailed, let's go up to 50. It might be a bit much, um, but you will see now with 50, you get these nice smooth curves. And you can play around with um, the magnitude scale. So right now it's root and tip. So on the root, there's not much going on, but then on the tip, they, they start to scraggle and, and bend. And this is already looking quite cool, I think. Um, what you can do now is apply a curl, which I like to do as well, just to rotate them a bit, or it's coil in this case. Let's just uh, create that. You can see now this creates me this big loops and it's super fluffy now. It might be a bit bit strong, but I think this is going in the right direction. So let's just reduce the radius, maybe to 0.25. And yeah, now you can see some of them are very nicely curled and it just feels very fluffy in general. And so what we did now, we created two modifiers, noise and a coil, and we also applied these two random functions onto the fibers itself. So what we want to do next is just increase our density. Let's go maybe up to 15 and see how, how dense we can get the mesh. All right, so you can see now this is looking very nice. This might be a bit much um, what I had before in my, um, in my original render in terms of the fuzziness, but I was just playing with the parameters to get the look and feel right. So why don't we just generate the fibers for the whole um, body? And now you can see how nicely it looks. It's very fluffy. You just want to touch it, right? <laughs> I really enjoy that. It's really cool. And then all you got to do now is essentially just um, select your sweater um, geometry here on the outliner, right click it, and you can assign a new material. I believe you can also do it right in here. Change the type to Arnold Render Engine, and then you can apply a hair shader, for instance, down here, which will just apply the default hair shader, I believe. Yeah, it does apply the physical hair shader. It's not what we really want. We want to use Arnold's hair shader. So I'm just using um, AI standard hair and I can just select everything and just assign that. Uh, but what we want to do is make sure melanin is on zero because the sweater is quite blue. We just want to um, apply our own colors to it. Um, something probably like that. And then you can play around with opacity once you do go into the render phase. So right now I don't have anything, any lights or nothing in the scene. So why don't I just create a quick light source and then we can see how it looks rendered. Also, while I was recording this, we actually hit the 40,000 subscribers milestone I was looking for. So thanks everyone for your continued support on my channel. I really appreciate all the nice comments and feedback I'm getting. And why don't we hit the next milestone, which is 50K. So be sure to help me out, subscribe, and obviously um, put that bell on. So thanks everyone. All right, after adding that HLI and another fill light from the back, you can already see how nice and fluffy that hair is. It's a bit long for my taste, but you can see it's definitely working and it's, uh, it's really um, giving this nice soft um, fiber feel. So what I want to do though is just change it's, change a few things in the XGen description here. So first of all, I think the density is not enough 
so we gotta push up the density oh sorry yeah the density over uh, from 15 to probably let's go 35 i think they are a bit too long so I, in the length here i just want to reduce that so probably i want to go point uh, to point two zero point two and max length is probably one so now they should be a lot shorter but we should have more of them so let's just regenerate them and see what we get now all right, you can see the update, the viewport already updated, so now let's just uh, run that again through the render engine. All right, so this looks now a lot better, like we have shorter fur now, we have a way higher density and it overall feels just more like a really, like a sweater made out of this really soft fiber. You don't love me! So I think this was a very successful in terms of getting the look right and all we had to do was change the, the length and the width essentially and work a bit on the shader but honestly we didn't do any major things on the shader side, we just changed the base color. You can change the roughness if you feel it's a bit too shiny or you want it to be a bit duller, you can just change the, um, the roughness in here to get an overall better feel of this. Alright, so now you guys know how to set up a nice uh, fluffy looking sweater in xgen and we did it in a, in a quite easy way it's just very simple to groom those those splines generate them add some noise modifiers and with a nice lighting setup you can actually get a pretty convincing a great looking render and if you want to follow along all these scene files renders everything i created for this series will be uploaded on patreon so you can uh, get that scene file and you can follow along the, the link in the description below as well and be sure to check out the next tutorial where I'll be working on the detailed lighting setups I created and we'll be also going into compositing. So be sure to check that out, have that notification bell on so you will not uh, miss out on the good stuff. So thank you everyone and I'll see you in the next episode.